visual attention and object and face recognition. This is a summary by me. This is my summary of Sci246 course, uh, Cognitive Psychology from Macquarie University 2019. What attention does? Attention allows for filtering, which is uh, a gatekeeper. As discussed prior in the last video about attention in bottlenecks in previous videos, uh, filtering allows individuals to sift out what is important, what information is needed, and exclude the rest. Finding, these act as a spotlight, and there's also binding, which combines different features to form an object. There is also favoring, which includes weighting or biases, and these help to keep track of what is important, uh, attending to information for survival. So for example, uh, having sudden loud noises causes individuals to turn towards these sudden loud noises because it could be dangerous, it could threaten one's survival. Or favoring could keep individuals focused on task relevant information for whatever that task may be. Covert attention. This requires keeping eyes fixated on the center while tracking shape movements. It was found that individuals can keep track of four dots or four shapes without eye movement and that we can keep attending to those without eye movement, but it has to be within uh, the limited four. Shifting attention. There are endogenous cues, which involve intentional goal-directed attention shifting. The Poisner queuing task tests attention shifting. This task involves when a target or letter is present in a particular shape that is queued, uh, and if so, it is valid. If not so, then it is not valid. The queue could be used to direct or mislead where the target would be. There are also exogenous cues, which are reflexive involuntary shifting of attention. An example of this is seeing a red flash during the Poisoner queuing task. Exogenous shifting is more rapid than endogenous and it has an inhibition of return, whereby once an individual looks at the exogenous cue, they are programmed not to revisit that cue. Spatial based selection. This is the selecting of random space locations to search for something, and Spotlight is used to scale its size. Treisman and Gillade in 1980 found that reaction time increased as a linear function of increased set sizes. Visual search paradigm, according to Treisman, directed participants to search and decide whether the target was present or absent, and reaction time was measured. Treisman found that the letter O popped out of of the if no other shape had curves, and that searching for R's amongst P's and Q's varied with increased set sizes. Object-based selection. This is selecting all of the object's features like color, shape, etc. and are within set confines of an object. Enhancement. This is when faster reaction times occur when searching for the same thing compared to searching for different objects. And yeah, this was found by Egli et al. 1994. This may be due to practice effects since individuals know what to look for. And as a result, they become trained and are very effective at searching for the object. Just like uh, finding Wally in Where's Wally, for example. Feature-based selection. Attention is paid to a specific feature alone. So for example, it could include color, orientation of the line, etc. Feature integration theory. This is defined as basic features processed in parallel by pre-attention. Basically, they are free-floating and that attention is used to bind these things together to form an object. It predicts that attention failures lead to illusory conjunction. Illusory conjunction is defined as when features are associated with one object but become incorrectly associated with another. So they become very loosely associated or in fact, two things don't not um, combine together at all. So Treisman and Schmidt found that illusory conjunction involved incorrect association of features with objects 18% of the time, and it was tested via using four shapes and two numbered stimuli. Object recognition. So now I'll talk about the different theories in how individuals recognize objects. Mars' theory of vision proposed that there was a bottom-up process, whereby there was an object-centered processing of 3D model representations, and this involved combining features from 2D to 3D models. Biderman's recognition by components theory proposed that representations relied on the combinations of geons, which were 36 geometric shapes. This was viewpoint invariant, whereby it was believed that people recognized the objects from different viewpoints. Finally, there is TAR's multiple view recognition, which is viewpoint dependent or to recognize objects it requires individuals to look at the object from many different viewpoints and they need to have experience yeah from different perspectives and angles face recognition there are effects that were recognized by cognitive psychologists, such as the face inversion effect, whereby it takes longer to process or identify faces when they are inverted or upside down. There is also a whole to part superiority effect. This includes the composite effect, when one half of the face is told to be focused at, as opposed to others, but these are holistically processed regardless, even though the faces are from two different people. There is also the part-whole effect, where the memory of the face part is more accurate when presented in the context of a whole face. 
So just trying to remember individuals' faces by individual objects like noses, eyes, mouths, etc. is not enough, well, it's not as effective as remembering all of these objects combined in the context of a face. Prosopagnosia. From lesion studies, it was found that there are individuals who have prosopagnosia, whereby they cannot recognize faces, and they have to rely on other cues, like hairstyle, clothing, etc. Objects and face recognition in the brain. Specialization. There are neurosubstrates that are selective for the category the categorization of certain stimuli. So for example, the fusiform face area for faces. One must also consider in cognitive psychology domain specificity, which is the exclusive processing of single domains of stimuli. In reality, faces are processed as objects of expertise. Individuals who become experts of certain objects, like types of cars, birds, phones, etc., are all processed in the fusiform face area, FFA also. And uh, yeah, individuals who are experts, basically they're able to discriminate. They, they're able to tell the difference between certain types and kinds of things. In conclusion, we looked at visual attention, filtering, finding, favoring, covert attention, shifting attention, endogenous, exogenous cues, poisoners, queuing tasks, spatial based selection, visual search paradigm, object based selection, enhancement, feature based selection, feature integration theory, and illusory conjunction, object recognition, Mars theory of vision, Biderman's recognition by theory, geons, viewpoint invariant TARS, multiple view recognition, viewpoint dependent face recognition, whole to part effect, face inversion effect, composite effect, part whole effect, prosopagnosia, specialization, and domain specificity. Join me in the next video whereby I talk about whereby I talk about episodic memory. And um, you can click on the playlist to look at other cognitive psychology videos. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.